Hello and welcome, I'm on fun and today we are doing some commentary for a video that's been up on the channel for like 4 months without any commentary or a sound effect on it at all. The music playing in the background is the theme for uh, Crook Mask uh, in the digital version, um, which is also where the footage is from, uh, so do check that out if it looks appetizing. Um, we want in this game, uh, in this video, we'll be uh, aiming to end the game prior to round uh, prior to round seven, so during round six. And the reason is uh, because that usually you want to end the game prior to entering tier three, which in a normal game is uh, ends after the round seven. But because Crook Mask has Vex, an attack that discards the top two cards of your deck, um, and if they're uh, tier three cards, you suffer a lot of damage. Um, so that means you will end up in round three, uh, sorry, tier three, a lot around sooner than you otherwise would. So that's why we want to end it round six instead of the usual round seven. And the reason why you want to end it prior to tier three is because tier three can be game ending. Just the wrong cards at the wrong time will just end the game. So that's why you want to l l win the game prior to getting hitting those risks. Uh, you don't want to play into them. Um, all right, so Crook Mask as um, as a theme is really great, and it managed to showcase the theme of corruption and the greed uh, really well with the corruption deck uh, and the corruption cards. Um, even the names of the corruptions are well themed around um, this greediness, the dire wisdom, and reckless might, uh, and so on. Uh, the really great names pulling through this theme of corruption and eating you from the inside like oh you get all these benefits uh, and then there is these drawbacks and as the game goes on the drawbacks really stack up um, it, and it takes away your agency because well you're being corrupted so of course you're getting um, lower and lower agency over your own uh, actions uh, so that's I think it showcases uh, the theme that it wants to showcase uh, really well. Problem is, um, it's failure in game design. Because people usually just look at it and say, Oh, I don't want all these corruptions. So I'm just gonna give the, take them all to myself, put them in my deck, so my allies don't have any of them. And then I'm not gonna draw any cards from my deck and avoid all the corruptions basically. So the way people uh, tend to get around it is just not playing the game. And every time you have something, uh, a gimmick that makes you not play the game to get around it it's, uh, and not interact with it, it's a failure of a game design. And as well, it feels quite bad to play against it because it takes away player agency. And we, when we played it this way where we won in on Extinction Mode prior, before uh, almost taking uh, Crook Mask out, um, by just banking up on not playing through my, uh, our deck and just healing up uh, using Kadir and uh, um, Arcane Nexus uh, to heal up a ton and get it around that way. But in this game, um, which is kind of inspired at all, um, we want to rush down Crook Masks, take all the benefits and say, we can turn this around, we can save our evil hold a lot sooner, we can get away from the corruption um, and smack it, smack him in the face uh, with the benefits that we gain. And well, I we I had a victory prior to begin recording, uh, which inspired me to like keep recording, but then first 24th game um, managed to get a win. And then I had games afterwards where I didn't manage to get the win. Um, so I, I think it showcases that it's, it's not consistent at all. It's, it, it's really bad. Um, but here we are. Um, all right, so let's get into it, and I can try to explain a bit more what I am trying to do to uh, succeed in it. Um, we have amplified vision as the main spell, and uh, you can see that I buy it on the first turn. Uh, we really want to have a lot of them going through to begin opening our breaches to deal a lot of damage. Um, deal two damage and then focus your uh, closed breach with the lowest focus cost um, and just and then if you have all breaches open you deal three damage 
Um, yeah, and Kadir heals up, so that's what we really want to see. Um, yeah, we already have the first negative spell attack coming up, and it feels really bad to get it. But uh, because we usually will have four crystals in hand, um, which is the perfect amount to buy Amplify Vision already. Um, but now we're forced to discard them prior to getting Amplify Vision. That feels kind of bad. Um, as our main damage dealing spell, we have Chaos Arc, um, and it plays really synergizes really well with uh, Kadir because you can uh, stack them up with her ability and just play a lot of them, get the bonus damage from it, uh, three plus two for each adjacent spell. Uh, so that's really what we want to see uh, with the damage output, putting up on 12 with the breach bonus. Um, just a bit earlier, I was trying. I really want to limit the number of uh, negative effects that comes off. Uh, I don't want to limit the number of corruptions that I see, um, and the, and that means limiting the number of unleashes uh, because it every. Um, I don't want to see the corruptions. They they hurt really bad. So I do want to limit the number of them that I see, even though we're trying to rush this. Um, we also need to mitigate the, the damage we take from them and the numbers that we see um, because it uh, yeah they, they, they deal a lot of damage um, so that's um, all right so we have sisters pearl that also helps in that regard to just sift through the deck make us see fewer corruptions get our through our crystals and sparks so we can get to the main damage dealing spells uh, and yeah, we already see we have a lot of corruption coming up, uh, and they do help uh, focus our breaches. Um, we just had Dire Wisdom, um, that's just corruption that may allows you to gain a spell, but then you put three corruptions on top of the deck. Oh, you really don't want to see it because it really uh, it gives the corruptions out really soon, and a lot of them happens, and I I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, because it is also one of those uh, spells that uh, uh, corruption that makes uh, corrupt corrupted mask um, so much more random uh, because it just if you get it as the first one like you almost already lost and if you hit it as the last one like it will get a deal a lot of damage to crook mask because there are so many more corruptions uh, it deals two damage for each uh, corruption that you cannot draw uh, so that hurts a lot uh, what was I going to say yeah so we gave the extra turn to Fiatraxa because Fiatraxa is going to be our main damage dealer she has our two chaos arcs or at least one for now uh, she will gain another one a bit later um, yeah, so that's why we want to see her go more often, and also she can charge up her ability sooner, uh, which we want to use to mitigate the num amount of damage, and it really helps because we're getting a lot of corruptions right now, so at some point, yeah, she has uh, the second uh, Chaos Arc right there, didn't even need to buy it, so even though we have uh, Ruby, Searing Ruby, um, we aren't using it because it's not necessary when the corruptions give us all the benefits, um, so here we can see that Fiatraxa, yeah, can use the ability on her next turn uh, to mitigate the amount of damage. And because we have the healing um, corruption in hand, uh, which usually would uh, make Gravehold suffer, uh, oh yeah, endless hunger, um, make Gravehold suffer three, and then you heal two. Uh, it just becomes a heal two, and then with Contagion, suffer one and take. Uh, a card that costs zero uh, from a discard pile back in hand uh, we can end up healing four for basically nothing um, I had another game where I was able to uh, use the corruption that makes you get another turn I could use that twice with contagion um, and just get through my deck really really fast um, so now uh, Fiatraxa will be healed up to seven almost full health um, and I would really wish I could give some life to Kadir because she really needs it. Um, but uh, that's life, that's life. Um, 
Oh yeah, Corruptor. I forgot to mention Corruptor. Corruptor deals one damage to Gravehold for each uh, each turn, um, and then, and which is quite bad because it stacks up. But because we finished the game so soon, it, it's kind of fine. Um, I don't want to take it out because it takes six damage to take out, which I could be dealing to Grave uh, Crook Mask. Um, and actually, we're getting really really close to taking down Crook Mask. Um, on top of that, when Corruptor takes damage, uh, well, it will uh, have you draw a Corruption. And that's two damage to Gravehold, and we don't we don't appreciate that damage right now. We are quite close uh, seeing that happening as well. Um, oh yeah, and here we have the power of Kadir, getting back two Chaos Arcs, so that's one or two uh, turns earlier than you otherwise um, as well as being able to stack them so we can have huge uh, damage from the adjacent spells um, just gonna stack the two chaos arc uh, on top of each other and then with the two amplify vision visions on side uh, and get getting blasting stuff to deal extra damage so that's gonna be 10 damage um, which helps a long way and the next one will be dealing eight and both Amplify Visions will be dealing four each. That's uh, eight, uh, 12, 16. Um, yeah, and here we see the problem with having uh, so much damage being taken all the time. Kadia wasn't able to heal herself up in time. And now um, a lot of, because it unleashes twice corrupt uh, Gravehold will take a lot of damage from, that will be four damage just from uh, the unleashes where we couldn't draw the corruptions um, and now fear Draxa will be the forced to take all the uh, damage from here on um, uh, really um, good she is at high life because she will need it she almost dies at the end and the reason why we're giving Kadia all the corruptions is because um, fear Draxa had another turn to go this round and we're going to finish it, it uh, soon so that meant that we would be seeing the corruptions uh, fewer times with Kadir taking them because she already had been drawing for this turn uh, and here we actually see the victory uh, and this is round six uh, the beginning of round six it was a one in five um, sorry one in three to go first with Fiatraxa then she had her ability, so if anyone else could would be going next, um, she could use the ability and they wouldn't be taking the damage. And we would be able to have another go, and that would be two in five. So we were having the odds against us, uh, but we still won out. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, and yeah, you could pause and uh, see all the cards that we just saw, and here we're having the victory. Uh, we didn't see Vex coming up this game, um, but that's why we want to end it here round 6, because otherwise we would be uh, drawing a lot of cards, uh, we'll be discarding a lot of cards from Nemesis deck. Um, overall, I'm quite happy about it, it felt good when it happened, Even, like it's the 24th game after all. It felt really good because it it really played well through with itself. Um, Fiatrax's ability to just skip the damage from all the corruptions and just saying, yeah, I have been corrupted, but I am not allowing it to have control over me. I'm control of my own life. I can see through this. I can see through the corruptions. Uh, and thematically, I, I felt like it was a really nice moment um, playing up against the, the corrupter and the greed of corrupted mask and stand stand strong and just say no. We we're getting through this. I am seeing clear. And Kadir was really great um, at getting the spells back and stuff to deal the extra damage, and and uh, that's why we could actually win on round one. Uh, sorry, on turn one of round six. Um, even if the odds were a bit against us, we did come up um, with the coin flip. Well, it's a bit worse than a coin flip, <laughs> but here we are. Got to take what we got, uh, what we can. Um, so yeah, felt really great.
long time ago as well. Nice to see through it again. Um, I hope that I was able to like point out the main things uh, that happened during the game, though I didn't comment on every single aspect. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so yes, there are some argument why cor Corruptor should be taken off as soon as possible because it does deal a lot of damage to Crook Mask, uh, sorry, Gravehold over time. But uh, it already deals minimum two because you usually will have to suffer damage on taking the corrupt, uh, corruption um, as well on top of getting to corruption that much uh, sooner I, I think it ends up being around the same while still stacking up your deck and if you're finishing uh, the game as soon as uh, we were here in round six that we didn't see vex um, oh that's another yeah um, I just I think their argument is uh, I hold to myself that we, you shouldn't try to uh, take out Corruptor, it's not worth it. Um, if the game is going on for longer, then yeah, sure. Uh, oh, another thing, Bex is usually just ends up being uh, an empty turn for uh, for Crook Mask, so it's actually quite nice to see it coming up, um, because it, it's just an empty turn, essentially. And same with Twisting Madness, uh, to discard this card, four cards in hand, and draw one card. Uh, it's and then the power two, Gravehold gain three life, Crook Mask gain for 13 life. Um, I don't want to see that go off, but if it comes up in round, f uh, end of round five or start of round six, it's it's an empty card basically because you're not going to see it um, pop off. So there are some cards in the Crook Ma in the Nemesis deck which are kind of fine as long as they happen at the right time and that you know they're coming up so you're playing around them and for Vex that means to just finish the game before it can come up uh, by stacking enough damage um, um, yeah um, I don't think it came up this game um, but the we were playing with flexing dagger and the reason why is there is a corruption that makes you uh, take a relic and put it on top of your deck then suffer damage uh, uh, exactly to uh, half of the cost of that relic so um, that's why we're having twisted uh, flexing dagger and then it just well it ends up being a spark from hand just one damage and like that's that's fine um, there's that minion that deals uh, its life in damage to the, ma to the mages and you can only deal one damage at a time to it so if that comes up at the right time like it's it's kind of nice to have going uh we did see twisted uh sorry we, we did see having dire wisdom come up um quite soon i guess but it did end up being quite nice with the chaos arc so like it goes back and forth uh, crook max uh, does go back and forth uh, it gets some good benefits that allows you to play quite slim without buying any gems even if if, if, if it forces you to buy gems uh, take gems uh, you can get some good gems uh, by just stacking up two uh, well three cost five cost and that way you can choose between them because it's just the cheapest gem that there is available and that way you can just choose a cost five and it it gets quite strong uh, or for um, just a base game like you only have four cost gems that you can do it with um, ruby uh, is an easy one to get there so uh, something to look into um, if i was to update it uh, this setup but i still think that sifter's pearl helps a lot to get through the corruption that you do get um, so yeah it's a beautiful, uh, ended up being quite beautiful with this setup where I was playing around the corruptions uh, to get the benefits and just smash through as uh, quickly as possible. Um, yeah, even though I was suffering a lot of damage. So thank you for watching and uh, take care out there. See you around. Bye. Right.
please let me have this. I want it. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Just take it. Yeah, we're gonna take the spark and... It was a glorious moment, okay. <laughs> take care.